Oh, we are packing a punch. Fight night from Fight Island, the second of four events in Abu Dhabi. Top 10 matchup in the featherweight division. Calvin Cater faces Dan Ige in the main event. Cater coming off a knockout win over Jeremy Stevens in May, while Ige has won six straight fights. A matchup of surging contenders. Ige coming off the biggest victory of his professional career, winning a split decision over Edson Barbosa. Cater, the Boston finisher, three and one in his last four fights. All three of those wins have come via knockout. Late round one, Cater lands the flying knee, follows up with a flurry of punches, absolutely punishing. In round two, Ige answers back. Dan Ige throwing a left hook that busts up the nose of Cater. You're scoring at home, maybe 1-1 one, one after two rounds. Round three was close. We head to round four. Calvin Cater connects on the front kick, lands some ground and pound, putting on a show. Live odds after round four. Cater minus 1,200. Take it straight to the bank. Fifth round, 10 seconds left. Cater putting a stamp on this fight, stuffs the takedown and unleashes on Ige. Calvin Cater rising the featherweight rankings Wins via unanimous decision. Now 4-1 and one in his last five and poised for a big fight. Cater on the money line hits at minus 260. Cater by decision. Nice value there at plus 250. Most popular wage on William Hill was Cater 42% of the money. Perhaps he had that part of a parlay. How about that? The Boston finisher getting it done in the main event. Co-main event, Tim Elliott, Ryan Benoit. Benoit making his eighth octagon appearance, three and four in his UFC career. Elliott sands the mullet, freshly cut, has lost his last three fights, needs a win in a big way. Right to round two, midway through the round, Benoit goes for the takedown, but Elliott gets Benoit in a headlock that somehow Benoit maneuvers out of. About a minute later, Benoit then goes on the attack, Going after the leg of Elliott with a heel hook. Elliott escapes the hook. Both fighters back to their feet. Now, Elliott's the favorite in this one. Live odds following round two. Benoit minus 275. Elliott plus 175. Friend of the program, Daniel Cormier says, Tim Elliott is winning this fight. I don't understand the live betting on this one. On to third and final round. Early in the third round. Elliott fights his way off the cage and he injures his right hand and he confirmed following the fight, his right hand went numb, had to pop two of his fingers back into place. Tough dude. Over a minute later, Elliot Benoit get in tight trading shots. That would be as his ventful as it would get in the third round. And how about this? Daniel Cormier was right. The fight went the way of Tim Elliott. Unanimous decision. Perhaps you had Benoit winning that one. Instead, it's Tim Elliott, the favorite. Elliott by decision, plus 188. Uh, the most popular pre-match wager, 54% of the money on Elliott money line. Jimmy Rivera against Cody Stamen in a featherweight bout. Former Bantamweight Jimmy Rivera making his UFC featherweight debut after over a year layoff. Lost his last two at Bantamweight. Another former Bantamweight, Cody Stamen picked up his first featherweight win just over a month ago. Now looking to make it 2-0. In round one, Rivera... Catches the kick, lands a right hand that drops Stamen. It's basically a pick em coming into the fight. Live odds after round one, Rivera at minus 250. Early in round two, Rivera in on a double legged Stamen to the ground. But then late in round two, Stamen lands the sneaky knee, but Rivera isn't impressed. Rivera after round two, minus 900. Looking for the fight to go the distance at minus 333. Under 10 seconds left in round three. Rivera connects with a leg kick. Fall by a counter left hook as the clock runs out. Jimmy Rivera raise his hand. Picks up his first UFC featherweight win via unanimous decision. Brian Campbell's best bet on this card was Rivera by decision at plus 125. Rivera on the money line. Maybe you had it as part of a parlay. The most popular Pre-match wager was Stamen on the money line. 59% of the money on Stamen, but it is Jimmy Rivera winning via decision. First fight on the main card. Abdul Razak El Hassan versus Munir Lazez. 
El Hassan making his return to the Octagon after a, almost a two-year layoff. All 10 career wins, first-round KO. Lazez making his UFC debut, 9-1, 8 knockouts, big underdog, plus 280. Early in the first, El Hassan looking for his 11th first-round KO, landing massive punches, but Lazez survives. Later in the first, Lazez picking up the pace, lands two hard knees to the body, and it's now Lazez the favorite after round one at minus 700, the first fighter ever to represent Tunisia in the UFC. Early in round two, Lazez stuns El Hassan with a right hand, walks El Hassan back to the cage, landing big time shots. Moments later, Lazez continuing to land strikes against the cage, but El Hassan starting to return fire back and forth. Live odds after round two, though, Lazez at minus 1400. Five seconds left. Both fighters letting it all loose until you hear the horn. And how about this? The underdog, Munir Lazez at plus 280, wins via unanimous decision. Wow. Cassius is the biggest underdog on the card. Lazez by decision at plus 850. What was popular wager, though, was Al Hassan money line with 55% of the money, and it's the underdog, Lazez, winning this one via unanimous decision. Let's get some instant analysis. Welcome in CBS Sports Combat Analyst, host of the State of Combat podcast, Brian Campbell. Cal Calvin Cater, Dan Ega go the distance here, but it's Cater who controlled the fight, wins via unanimous decision. What did you see from Cater on this night? You know, I saw a lot of uh, maturity and poise. We know that this is a tough and deep division, but this fight was an opportunity for two guys in the top 10 to really stand out and tell you that I'm ready for the top half of those featherweight rankings and eventually a title shot. What Cater had to do here was establish himself as the bigger striker, something he did early. But what I really loved was his adjustments, the ability to stuff Dan Ige's takedown defense and really be able to work from the outside, use his jab, use that counter right, and eventually take that right eye and swell it shut with that lead elbow, the same strike that he hit Jeremy Stevens with just two months ago to score another big knockout win. Now that you look at four victories in his last five for Calvin Cater, here's a guy at 32 years old who's, let's say, arrived on the scene a little bit later than most, but he is peaking at just the right time. You may have heard him after the fight mention current champion Alexander Volkanovsky and say, hey, if you're looking for a top contender, a hungry one, a busy one, I could be your guy later this year. That's probably wishful thinking, look at the standings now, but to come in ranked number eight and get a victory this thorough and solid, this is Calvin Cater rising when it matters most. How about a Cater and Max Holloway matchup? What do you think of that? Uh, fantastic, obviously from a style perspective, but Holloway coming off a loss, probably not as likely. But what's interesting about the top 10 of the featherweight rankings right now is a good five or six toward the top have been inactive this entire year and haven't fought once in 2020. That's what put the onus on this fight to main event UFC's second visit to Fight Island in four nights for really an opportunist to arise. Both guys had fought multiple times in short distance. For Ige, this was his third fight on this calendar year alone. I do think you see Calvin Cater sprout up toward the top of those standings, but it does remain a log jam with the likes of Brian Ortega, Korean Zombie, Yair Rodriguez, Zabit Magomed Sharapov. This is all killer, no filler at the very top. But I do think we learned that Calvin Cater does belong. Yeah, BC packing a punch with the pronunciations as well. All right, we had another featherweight bout on the main card. Jimmy Rivera against Cody Stamen. Rivera making his UFC debut at featherweight. He was coming off back-to-back -back losses in the bantamweight division to Aljamain Sterling and the current champ, Peter Jan. Rivera hadn't fought in over a year, tested positive for COVID-19 in April. Meantime, Stamen making a quick turnaround, coming off a win at UFC 250 in June. BC, you picked Rivera to win via decision. That was your best, bat, uh, best bet. Straight cash there, my friend. How did you think Rivera looked in his debut at featherweight, and could this perhaps be a permanent move for him? Uh, it looks to be more of the one-and-done variety just by the way this fight came together. Stamen fought at 145 in his last bout, and, you know, Miller, I'm sorry, uh, he, Rivera admitted after the fight he didn't even have an opponent as recently as three or four days ago, so it became a featherweight bout by necessity. 
but where he sees himself is really in the mix of that very deep bantamweight division. And for Jimmy Rivera, this was a win he needed to get. He had lost twice in a row, three of four overall, all three, though, to the very elite in this division. And after that initial run in which he was 21-1 and one and had announced himself as potentially the next big thing in this division, he had to come down and get humbled a bit. This was getting it right back tra on track. It wasn't a perfect showing. He admitted as much afterwards, given the layoff and given the circumstances. But you saw a very high-level bout out there against a very hung fighter in Stamen. And what you had in the end was a Jim Rivera who used his wrestling, used his smarts, never really got in any trouble and scored a solid victory. All five main card fights went the distance on Wednesday. The last time that happened was at UFC 225 in 2018. So what's your biggest takeaway from fight night on Wednesday? Uh, that us on the East Coast don't get served well by this repeatedly. But look, overall, it is what it is how the fight cards play out on this night. You had a little opportunity to showcase a bit in the featherweight division with those two big fights you mentioned. But you don't always get the fireworks, even though certainly this main event had plenty of potential. Let's not forget, though, Dan Ige had never gone five rounds. Calvin Cater hadn't gone the full distance since 2009. I think you saw both fighters a little bit more safe in their approach to make sure they didn't have any troubles in the end. I can't speak for the other fights as much as this main event went the distance, largely because those two fighters wanted to make sure they were going to be fresh when it mattered. BC, great stuff as always. Appreciate the breakdown here on CBS Sports HQ, my friend. Thank you. And hey, we've got another fight night on Fight Island Saturday night. A title fight. Davison Figueredo against Joseph Benavides for the vacant flyweight championship. Figueredo knocked out Benavides back in February, but Figueredo did not become the champion because he missed weight. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Brian Campbell, Rashad Evans, breaking that down on the State of Combat podcast, one of the best podcasts on the market, the State of Combat podcast. Download and subscribe today.